Hello everyone and welcome to Barca News. It's January 14th, 2023 and serious doubts have been raised about the actual age of Yusofa Mukoku. Also, Newcastle are looking to beat Barcelona to the signing of Ruben Neves and it's reported that Barcelona are now open to hearing offers for Eric Garcia. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Mo and we're only one day away from the El Clasico match as Barcelona are set to face off against Real Madrid in the Spanish Super Cup final and this will be Xavi's first opportunity to win his first trophy as Barcelona's coach. Now, in the press conference leading to tomorrow's match, Xavi was asked about the meaning of winning the Spanish Super Cup and he said, We have a lot of players who haven't won a title. I see it as an advantage. We will have the hunger to win. It's a terrific chance for all of the young guys and the more experienced players need to help. A trophy would give us the confidence in ourselves to keep working and seeing the reason behind the process. Whatever happens, we'll keep going the rest of the season. But when you have a trophy in your pocket, everything changes. Now I really hope that Barcelona will win tomorrow's match. Not only because I want to see Barcelona win its first trophy, but also winning a trophy could be a huge morale boost to the team, which could then help them compete for La Liga, Copa del Rey, and the Europa League. Now there are reports stating that Xavi could be changing the formation for tomorrow's match and that he could use a 4-4-2 formation like he used against Atletico de Madrid as opposed to the usual 4-3-3 formation. And this also talks about Ronald Araujo starting in the right back position to deal with the Vinicius Jr. threat with both Jules Koundé and Andreas Christensen at the, heart of the, at the heart of the defense as center backs. Now this also talks about what both Frank Lyon and Osman Dembele is starting in tomorrow's match even though they were recalled in the semifinal against Real Betis because of some discomfort and pain that both players felt. Now I will be making a post-match analysis video after tomorrow's match, so hopefully it will be a happy and a positive one, and hopefully we can celebrate Barcelona's first trophy after, uh, after a long time. Now on to the news that serious doubts have been raised about the actual age of Yusofa Mukoku. Now, as we've been talking about for quite some time, Mukoku's contract with Dortmund is set to expire in the summer of 2023, and that's when Barcelona are hoping to sign him as a free agent. However, Dortmund want to extend the contract of the player so they can sell him later and cash in on his transfer of value. Now, um, both Mukoko and Dortmund are currently in talks to extend this contract with the Bundesliga club. And as I reported previously, Dortmund's CEO has stated that both parties are not on the same page. And this is the club's final attempt to renew the contract of the player. And if both parties cannot agree on the terms of the renewal, then Mukoku will leave in the summer. And that will be great news for Barcelona because they would be able to sign one of the most promising talents in Europe uh, free of charge. Now, serious doubts have been raised about the age of Mukoku. Now, Mukoku is from Cameroon and he was adopted by his German parents. And his birth certificate shows that he was born in 2004, which means that he's 18 years old going on to 19. But a new birth certificate has surfaced that has the exact same name as Yusofa Mukoku. And that birth certificate shows the birth date as uh, in to, um, the year 2000, which would mean that Mukoku would be 22 years old going on to 23 if this birth certificate actually belongs to him. Now this could hugely impact uh, the, play, the, the player's future and the possibility of other clubs signing him. Now you might ask, how would this impact a player? After all, Mukoku is a very talented player who has proven himself in Europe, has proven himself in international football uh, through Germany. But the way this would impact the player, it would be his market valuation and the, the decision making of other clubs in uh, deciding on whether to sign him or not. See, when you're 18 years old, you're still developing and growing as a footballer. So even if you are a great footballer at 18 years old, this only means that you're gonna be even better and do greater things. So your market value would be much higher because it will be based on how much better a club thinks you're gonna be in the future. Now, if you're 22 or 23 years old, you pretty much have done development and growing as a footballer. So even if you are a great football player, 
it's understood that your skill level will remain the same because you're not gonna improve anymore since you have uh, finished growing. So your market value will be based on your current skill levels because it will be understood that that skill level is not going to rise in the future. So yes, Yusuf Amokoko is a very talented player, but if he's 18 years old, then his market value would be much higher because he, it's understood that he, would, he will continue to grow and improve. So his market value will be based on his future projection of his skill level. But if he is 22 years old, then his market value would be lower because even though he is a great football player, his market value would be based on his current skill level because it would be understood that that skill level is not gonna improve in the future. Now this could also have legal ramifications for the player because if it, if it is proven that Mukoku lied about his age, then Dortmund could look to sue the player and the German league could look to punish him as well because when you lie about your age, it could be seen as fraud to gain an unfair advantage, especially when you're young and going through a club's academy because if you're 16 years old and you're competing against 12 years old, 12 year olds, then you're gonna have a much bigger advantage over them because of course you're gonna be much bigger, much stronger, much faster than 12 year old kid. Now there is a way how Yusuf Amokoku can prove his actual age and that's done through imaging where a CT scan is taken of your wrist and based on the development of your bones in the wrist, doctors could tell your ex uh, could approximate your exact age so they could tell whether Mukoko is actually 18 years old or whether he's 22 years old. Now Dortmunds, Dortmund are completely denying these doubts about Mukoko's age and they're saying that they're absolutely false and this is only other clubs attempt to lower the player's value so they can sign him for less but it's now being reported that before Mukoku signed for Dortmund, Leipzig were in the process of signing the player and they also had doubts about his age and they asked that Mukoku undergo this imaging exam to prove his age and it seems like the player refused to do so, so Leipzig backed away from the deal and Mukoku ended up signing for Dortmund. So we're gonna have to see how this dilemma will be resolved, whether Mukoku is gonna agree to undergo an imaging exam, and if it is proven that he has lied about his age, we're gonna have to see what that's gonna do for Dortmund's desire to renew his contract, for Barcelona's desire to sign him, and whether the player is gonna face any legal ramifications. Now speaking of Mukoku, as I reported previously, Newcastle are interested in signing the player and they're looking to beat Barcelona to the signing of Mukoku. And they have reportedly offered Dortmund 30 million euros to take the player right now in the winter transfer market. And they have offered Mukoku a 9 million euro salary per season. Well, it seems that Newcastle are now trying to beat Barcelona to the signing of another player that the club are interested in. And that player is Ruben Neves. Now, as I reported previously, the sporting committee, uh, Ruben Neves is the sporting committee's favorite option to replace Sergio Busquets in that pivot position once Busquets leaves the club. And Ruben Neves' agent, Jorge Mendes, has arranged for the transfer of the player from Wolverhampton to Barcelona on, on low cost. And this transfer is only pending Xabi's green light, who is reportedly not quite convinced with the player being the right fit for that pivot position in the place of Sergio Busquets. Now, even if Frank Dion does become Barcelona's pivot, then Barcelona could still look to sign Ruben Neves. Because the reason why Xabi doesn't think that Ruben Neves will be a good replacement for Busquets in that pivot position is because Xabi considers Ruben Neves as more of an interior and if Frank Dion moves from the interior position to the pivot position, then Barcelona would look to replace Frank Dion in that interior position and since Xabi considers Ruben Neves as an interior, then Barcelona could look to sign Ruben Neves to replace Frankie de Jong in that interior position. Now, Newcastle are reportedly currently monitoring the situation and seeing whether Barcelona are gonna end up signing Ruben Neves or not. And if Barcelona don't make up their mind pretty soon, then Newcastle could look to swoop in and try to lure the Portuguese midfielder away from Barcelona. Now on to the news that reports are stating that Barcelona have decided to begin hearing offers for Eric Garcia. Now, Eric Garcia joined Barcelona on a free transfer from Manchester City, and even though he was doing pretty good when he first joined the, the camp now, he hasn't been getting much playing time as of late. Now, it's reported that Mikel Arteta's Arsenal are very interested in signing Eric Garcia, given that Mikel Arteta is a huge fan of Eric Garcia since they both coincided at Manchester City when Eric Garcia was playing under Pep Guardiola and when Mikel Arteta was Pep Guardiola's coaching assistant. Now reports are now stating that Barcelona are now open to hearing offers from Eric Garcia. However, as I reported previously, Xavi has decided that no player should leave during this winter transfer market because he considers 
uh, players leaving the team as weakening the team overall since Barcelona are not going to be making any signings due to the financial fair play rules. Now, given Xavi's decision, I would put an asterisk next to these reports claiming that Barcelona are open to hearing offers from Eric Garcia because I don't see Barcelona looking to offload any players during this winter transfer market, especially someone as Eric Garcia, who Xavi considers as a very important player. Now, this doesn't mean that Barcelona are not going to be open to hearing offers for Eric Garcia in the summer, because after all, that's when Barcelona are hoping to reduce their wage bill so they can make new signings. So if they do receive a substantial offer, uh, such as from Arsenal, then they could consider offloading Eric Garcia. Because after all, receiving a substantial offer for your fifth center back would be a good business deal. Now we will end today's video with the good news that the Barcelona Femini have, de have defeated Sporting Huelva 0-3 in the Spanish Women's League. And with this victory, the Barcelona Femini are still undefeated as they have won 14 out of the 14 matches that they have played in. And they're currently sitting at the top of the Spanish League with 42 points and 52 goal difference. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like. Also, I'd like to invite all of you to please leave a comment down below, giving me all your thoughts and opinions about all the news that I share with you. And finally, I'd like to invite all of you to please subscribe to the channel so you can stay current on all the latest news in regards to our beloved club, FC Barcelona. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. And as always, Pisca Barça.